Welcome to episode number five of the Kiribati 36 sailboat build. In this episode, I will be covering stage number nine, which is the rear rudder blades, and also be looking a little bit at the mast support, as well as a larger lead melting vessel that I've uh, put together that will be needed for the uh, the bigger lead ballast items. So let's uh, let's take a look. After a 45 day wait, I finally received my two Seplos version 3 or BMS version 3 battery boxes. Uh, so they will be built in under floor level and also act as part of the ballast. They will uh, roughly weigh uh, somewhere around 200 kilos or 220 when they're all assembled. I will run the battery build and also the emergency generator setup on a separate playlist and um, just to not confuse things. So uh, look out for, for that one as well. Mast support column now assembled and welded as one piece, which is really nice to tick off. This top part is the actual uh, mast support, which will be welded to the, to the deck. So it's a little bit of a thicker piece, this two uh, eight millimeter aluminium pieces welded together. So 16 millimeter all in total. So I'll leave that off for now until it's ready to be assembled. In the mast column support, you also have these uh, Delrin wheels. So you will have uh, two Spectra ropes going down here. And then you have another one and these parts will then help towards raising and lowering the swing keel. So there will be a little uh, crank on the side where you can crank it up and you can crank it down. You can have a pneumatic solution for this or even an electric solution, but I've opted in on a solution where I have less moving parts that can go wrong. So by just having a crank and some ropes, I expect it to be fairly straightforward to fix if anything breaks. And as usual, because we are working with stainless steel and aluminium, there's plenty of uh, plastic bushings that separates the uh, aluminium from the stainless steel touching together. Same thing goes with any bolts. So there will always be a little bit of thread that touches the aluminium on the inside, but with Sika Flex, uh, plenty of Sika Flex, you can then avoid having any major major contacts of the two different materials. This is the mast support from the side and then from the rear. And as you can see here, this, this is what you will then attach the cleat to that the ropes will go through. This is just a support uh, piece of aluminium that comes off just to make sure that I keep the exact width. Because this side will later be welded onto the um, keel box itself. So that will be, will be covered uh, all the way up. Hole on each side to allow the, uh, hole on each side to allow the rod to go straight through. So that it, and obviously instead of having these plastic tie bands, there will be a proper cleavage pin uh, put in on each side. And same thing goes for this top, top one as well.
So this is the final result. The two rudders or the rear rudders, because there's another part of the rudder as well, which I refer to as the front rudder. That comes in another episode. The total cost for stage nine, which is the uh, rudder blades, the rear rudder blades only, not the stocks, came to um, 807, 87, Great British Pounds, which is 989.87 US dollars. Of that, parts and material was 261.86 pounds, uh, which is 313.68 US dollars. And the external labor was 546.01 pounds, which is 676.19 US dollars. If you break down the uh, external labor, then uh, the welding stood for 320 pounds UK, 402.26 in US dollars. The laser cutting stood for 166.01, which is 198.87 US dollars. And the machining, which was adding the 5% blade uh, curvature to the outer shells came to 60 pounds, which is uh, roughly 75.06 US dollars. If you're interested in the total cost calculation, then I'll uh, leave the uh, Google Doc URL in the description of this uh, video. If you are interested in seeing a Hemi breakdown, every nut bolt screw that's uh, comprises of the total stage cost, then you can find that in the modular hippo blog. And I leave the uh, URL to the uh, blog for this uh, particular stage in the description. So you can uh, have a look. Conclusion on stage nine. Once again, parts and material for this stage came in at 32% an external labor at 68%, and that shows how important it is to have all the tools and skills in order and upfront before you actually start to build. Because uh, in this case, it's actually more costly to pull in external labor than the actual material itself. Lessons learned on this stage. Uh, I was worried about how to find a way to bend the external rudder plates into the needed shape. And it turned out that an engineering company with a press brake can easily calculate and precision bend these plates for you. So it's uh, something I thought would be a massive job actually turned out to be a quick job and, and fairly affordable compared to other parts of, uh, of the build. Total spend so far for stages one to nine is uh, 5,351 and 58 Great British Pounds which is roughly than 6,292.07 US dollars. With that, thank you for watching this fifth episode uh, covering stage nine. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave a comment in the comments and I will respond. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of this build and I'll see you next time. Thank you.